Excellent, excellent. So I am um, going to tell you the, the story of uh, uh, flash radiation therapy as that Derek just said. It started uh, at the radiobiology uh, level. And before to start uh, with this uh, story, I would like to I have, yeah, I have, I would like to um, uh, bring a, a very uh, simple definition of what flash radiation therapy is. In fact, it's irradiation at ultra high dose rate. What does it mean? It means that we deliver the same dose, but very fast. We shift from minutes of exposure to milli and even microsecond of exposure. So we do contract the time uh, of exposure for the same dose. Now I'm back to the story and I'm gonna tell you how it began more than 13 years ago when Vincent Favodon from the Institut Curie came to me with some samples that he had irradiated with his Kinetron uh, device at ultra high dose rate and he was searching for fibrogenic remodeling. So normal tissue fibrosis that do occur at later time point after exposure of a tissue to irradiation. And he couldn't find anything. And yes, there was no fibrosis in those tissue. So we went on and on irradiating a lot of mice, a lot of uh, um, a different type of schedule, and we never found any fibrotic remodeling after ultra high dose rate radiation. So what we did was to do and to use the same type of parameter to irradiate tumor. And in that case, we've been able to control the tumor. And this uh, was published a couple of years later, and you can see that we have been very cautious. We reproduced the experiment a lot of time. We have been al analyzing a lot, and uh, we published this first paper showing in the lung that ultra high dose rate irradiation was able to protect from the development of fibrosis, but keep tumor control. And this made a little bit of noise in the um, uh, scientific community, as well as uh, with press release at that time. And in fact, it was uh, the first time that we could show the relevance of the time in tissue response to ionizing radiation. Then I moved my group to uh, Lausanne University and uh, met Claude Bella, who is a metrologist and uh, uh, was able at the time, perhaps Claude was a little bit younger and uh, um, was keen to do some weird things. So I was able to convince him to uh, look into uh, this uh, new uh, type of radiation therapy delivery, of dose delivery. And he developed with his team a redundant, redundant dosimetric strategy to be able to have a very robust recording of the um, uh, dose delivered. And that's what we did with our experimental beam, which is shown here. It's a DINAC uh, of 5.5 MeV energy, and it worked first. And you see the publication that Claude and his team were able to perform. Now, having this ready and having, having access to robust dosimetry, we've been able to develop systematic biological approaches and studies with my team, especially a very uh, uh, talented PhD student in the lab, Pierre Montegruel, along with our collaborator at UCI, the team of Charlie Limoli. We have done systematic studies in mice, in zebrafish, showing that flash radiation therapy was not inducing normal tissue toxicity, but was able to control the tumor. Then, we moved on to a very um, uh, interesting type of uh, studies, 
don't endanger animal in pigs. Here on the right side of the screen, you can see that on the same pig, we've been uh, irradiating at the same time at flash dose rate and conventional dose rate, small spot of skin at very high doses. And you can see that we used doses ranging from 28 gray to 34 gray. That led to the development of typical radiation necrosis, fibronecrosis, uh, after conventional dose rate exposure. But the skin remained completely normal after flash exposure. We are now mainly four years post uh, flash irradiation. The pig is still alive and this flash skin is still completely normal. We jumped then on um, a, a, a cat, a phase one cat trial, where we did a dose escalation study in order to be able to control um, squamous cell carcinoma at the top of the nose uh, uh, of the cat, as you can see here. And we did it, this first study with Patrick de Vauchel and Pauline de Fornel. We are now moving on in a phase three study with the team of Zurich, Carla Rohrer team, and the work is, uh, is ongoing. With that in hands, uh, the clinician, Jean Bourris, Wendy Jean Ray, and Olivier Guet were able uh, a couple of years ago already, uh, two years ago already, to treat a first patient. And you have all seen um, this publication. Jean will probably speak further about that. So this uh, leads to a, a, a lot of publication, and you have here all the publications that are uh, uh, that came out of uh, of this work, and in fact, if we take the summary of what we've seen in many species, from the zebrafish to the mice to the pig to the cats, and in various organs, what we can say is that in fact, flash radiation therapy does not induce the classical pathogenic pattern described after normal tissue exposure to irradiation. And this has been shown in my group. Here is the publication in blue, but also in other groups over the world. So there's the publication here in green with different type of beam, electron, photon, but also proton more recently. And we have also a couple of negative results that have been published here in red that are very interesting because it helps us to really define what are the relevant uh, parameter for flash irradiation. I said that uh, indeed flash uh, uh, radiotherapy was able to protect from normal tissue, but it is equally able to eradicate tumor when compared with conventional radiotherapy at conventional dose rate for the same dose. Here we have less uh, a publication, but uh, we, we, we still have a couple of them. And uh, some work is uh, um, ongoing to, to investigate this question in a more uh, precise manner. So what is really important to understand is that the flash effect is a biological effect. It has a biological definition. It's also really important to understand that ultra high dose rate irradiation is not necessarily flash. So flash has to be defined by the biological effect and it's really important to be able to have a very precise characterization of the parameters, the physical parameter uh, used to trigger this flash effect. So in the lab, Jean-François Germont did this, uh, this study from the, the published work by us and others. And in that graph, you can see the conditions that are needed to obtain the flash effect. The flash effect has been obtained here where all the, the, the dots are shown. So most of the data obtained by us and other cluster at the same uh, level of the graph. You can see here with three to 50 pulses or with one pulse. And the, 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 the point with the, the cross here in blue, red, and gray 
or the publication where no flash effects have been recorded. So we can, we can see that in fact, if we are uh, more on the right part of this graph showing the dose rate in the pulse on one hand, and the radiation time for delivering 10 uh, a gray. On the other hand, we need to really decrease the time of exposure and increase the dose rate in the pulse. And further investigation are needed to really characterize the margin of the flash effect. From the physical, chemical, and biochemical point of view, we have a lot of work to do to understand how flash irradiation, irradiation at ultra high dose rate, is providing its effect. And in the, in, the, in the lab, we are doing that in the frame of a Swiss national uh, funding grant, um, uh, which is called MAGIC. And you have here all the uh, people involved uh, this uh, MAGIC team. At the biological uh, level, uh, we start to understand a little bit more how this flash effect is working. And we have some publications that have shown a lower production of H2O2 and a contribution of oxygen to the effect, lower level of persistent DNA damages and senescent cells, perhaps the metabolism, the intercellular metabolism uh, intracellular metabolism, including the redox metabolism, is an important uh, parameter. In publications, we've shown that we have a role for the decrease of inflammation and probably implication of the immune system. We modulate signaling pathway and protect some stem cells as well as protect uh, vascular uh, component of the, of the tissue. But overall, this biological um, uh, mechanism needs to be investigated. And it's really a, a, a huge privilege to be able to work in that field where everything has to be, uh, to be discovered. So with that, I'm going to uh, uh, end here and um, uh, uh, leave the, the stage to Raphael Mutli and Jean Bouris who's going to show you how flash radiation therapy might change radiation oncology practice and hopefully cancer treatment outcome.